Hey everybody and welcome back to 3COG. Today we're going to talk about the laws that Governor Blackface, or Governor Northern, just signed into law here in Virginia. Uh, we're going to talk about not only exactly what they are, some of, the, some of the points of the law, but also why they are a bad thing. And that, uh, because a lot of these people look at them and they say, well, what's the big deal? So, one of the things that you need to understand right off the bat is that guns are personal property just like anything else that you own. And the government should not be able to restrict your ability to do things that you want to with your personal property. Um, everybody acts like guns have some superpower that makes them special when really they, they don't. Uh, it's just another tool, it's just another object. So getting into it, well, so one of the first laws that passed was red flag laws. Um, red flag laws or extreme protection orders basically mean that in a closed session, without you having the right to defend yourself in court, which we're supposed to have, they can uh, take away your right to have a gun, and they can take your firearms. Not only can they take your firearms, but say they show up and they say, hey, we've got an extreme protective order, uh, protection order against you, you need to surrender your firearms, and you say, okay, I agree with you, uh, I'll surrender my weapons, but I don't want to give them to you. I want to transfer them to somebody else, you know, my adult child who lives somewhere else or uh, whatever. Uh, you have to get court approval now to transfer that personal property to another adult who is perfectly legal uh, to possess that item. So that's wrong. Now, the application of the red flag laws, obviously this just passed, I believe, on Thursday, the uh, beginning of April. So... We haven't seen yet how this is going to play out, but they say in the law and in the governor's summary of what he signed said uh, that you'll be given the opportunity to surrender your weapons. Okay, so what if you say no? Well, then that turns into uh, increasing your odds of getting shot for sure, uh, potentially SWAT teams or whatever else hitting your house. Uh, there have already been multiple cases state to state of people dying because they're refusing to surrender their firearms. Uh, it creates a very, very dangerous situation and it's not following the way things are supposed to go in regard to our right to a speedy trial, our right to face our accusers in court, all of that stuff. They're just throwing out the window and saying, nope, we'll make the decision without you knowing and then you will abide by it. Mm, that's wrong. So that's your red flag laws. Uh, weapon storage punishment. So they've increased the punishment basically from a, well not basically, but they increased the punishment from a class 3 misdemeanor to a class 1 misdemeanor if you allow um, your children to have access to weapons. So th this is one of those BS feel-good laws that don't actually do anything because it's not actually preventing a child from getting a weapon. So obviously the point of, the of this law is to try to prevent a child from having access to a weapon, getting that weapon, and doing something terrible with it. Well, everybody wants that, right? That's why we as responsible gun owners and adults need to be responsible for how we store our weapons. We are also responsible for how we train our children, how we raise our children in terms of valuing human life and understanding guns for the tools that they are. But all this does is increase the punishment after the fact. So they're saying, oh, we're making it safer for children, when in reality, they're not doing anything. It, it's a nonsense law that doesn't actually do anything to keep anybody safer. They're just increasing the punishment for after the fact, which is essentially null and void. It hasn't prevented the act. So big thing on that, it's our responsibility as parents to raise our children correctly and to understand their maturity level and... Um, their understanding of firearms. So they went to, uh, now you can only buy one handgun a month in Virginia. Uh, that's dumb because what if I want to buy an entire collection of a certain type of pistol? Like I want every type of 1911 ever made. Now I can't. I have to buy them one piece at a time, one per month for years to actually acquire that. That doesn't make any sense, right? So what they say is it's to curtail stockpiling and weapon trafficking. Okay, so weapon trafficking, selling it to people that shouldn't have it, that's illegal. It's all, we already have a law that says you can't do that. 
And all this law is doing is preventing law-abiding people like myself from buying a set. You know, say I want five of those pistols of various options. Um, now I can't. I have to buy them over a period of five months. This is a stupid law applied to property that is not applied to anything else. If I want to go out and buy five motorcycles, I can go buy five motorcycles. If I want to buy a whole box of Matchbox cars, I can buy a whole set of Matchbox cars. There's no laws about that. Uh, the purpose of the Second Amendment has nothing to do with hunting, has nothing to do with uh, self-defense uh, on, on like a day-to-day -day basis. The purpose of the Second Amendment is to prevent a tyrannical government from being able to impose its will on the people. And to some extent, we should have a decent reserve of arms and ammunition and other gear to be able to actually prevent that. And if somebody is just getting into it, they just turned 21, and they want to buy five handguns, now they have to do it over a period of five months. That's wrong. Personal property should not be regulated in that fashion. Uh, so, another one that they added, reporting a lost or stolen firearm within 48 hours. So, you have to report it within 48 hours of discovering that the weapon was lost or stolen. This is another one that people don't understand the issue with. Uh, my problem is twofold. A, how do I know exactly when the weapon was taken? So that piece of information could just not matter. Say, oh, I discovered it was missing uh, 24 hours ago. And they're like, all right, well, you met the 24-hour block. And then when was the last time you saw it? Uh, two years ago. That's not helpful. Additionally, it's putting the onus on me for a crime that somebody else commits. If somebody steals my property, steals a firearm from me, they are a criminal. Why are you now attaching criminal charges on me to their criminal act? That's wrong. Um, and then they went to uh, mandatory background checks for all gun sales in the state of Virginia. So whereas I, it used to be that I could sell a gun to a buddy of mine and uh, we could do it essentially however we wanted to, now they're doing background checks for uh, every transfer, well, not every transfer, every sale of weapon. Uh, again, this turns into a lot of people saying, well, who cares? That's not a big deal. It is, because what other item that I own do I need to do a background check to sell to another person? People say, oh, well, how do you know if that person's a criminal or what they plan on doing with it? Well, there's two parts of that. A, I don't really hang out with criminals, and B, I'm not responsible for what a person does with an object if I sell it to them. Right? They're responsible for their actions, I'm responsible for mine. If I were to sell a gun to somebody, or if I was about to sell a gun to somebody and I just didn't like their demeanor, attitude, or whatever, I'm just not going to sell it to them. But again, you don't put the onus on somebody else for the criminal actions of an individual. Um, this is also increasing a tax, which I'm not a fan of taxes. So there's a required at least $2 background check fee that gun stores and dealers must collect to perform a background check. So now we're adding on. We're saying, well, there's a $2 tax for that. Most gun stores charge between $30 and $50 for a transfer. Um, it, sh it shouldn't be that way. If I want to sell my private property to somebody else, then I should be able to without a background check. Now, those of you, there are some of you who are going to say, oh, well, that's going to allow us to know who had the weapon. Well, it actually doesn't work that way. So years ago, my wife and I received a phone call from a, share, uh, from a um, detective in regard to a weapon that we used to own that was involved in a crime. They contacted us because my wife purchased the weapon at some point in time. Now, that's true, she did buy the gun. We then, at another point in time, sold that weapon to a gun store. We sold it to a gun store, and then it was eventually transferred to another person. Well, them, as a gun store, they're required to do a background check, do all the same documentation that we did when we initially purchased the item. They didn't contact that person, they didn't even know that the weapon had been transferred through a gun store. They contacted my wife and asked about it. And we said, well, you know, that weapon was sold years ago 
to a gun store. There was a whole other set of paperwork, but they didn't even look into it. They didn't even realize that it was a transferred item. So the system doesn't work. Again, it's not going to stop any criminals from buying firearms because they already break the law. So does it, you know, so yes, that means I have to follow the law. If I'm going to buy a hunting rifle from a buddy, I now have to do a background check to do that. Great. Wonderful. That background check, passing or not passing, has no impact on the rest of the weapons that I own. Doesn't change that. Just means I can't get that one. And criminals will continue to get weapons the way criminals get weapons, which is illegally. Buying stolen property, buying, you know, straw purchase, all that kind of stuff. Background checks don't work. They have not been proven to do any good. So that's a breakdown of the five laws that are now signed into effect here in Virginia as of beginning of April. Uh, obviously, I don't like them. Uh, I think I laid it out pretty clearly why I don't. We need to remember that the Second Amendment is a very big deal. We need to remember why the Second Amendment exists. And we need to be very, very careful about voting for people who are going to restrict our rights to property and to owning and controlling the items that we spend our money on. And all this is is more ways of them controlling our actions, controlling, uh, trying to control, I mean, everything. You know, red flag laws. So now I take away my, uh, my rights for in a court of law. Weapon storage punishment. So if I fail to raise my children correctly and then they get their hands on a weapon that they weren't supposed to, you're going to charge me with a class one misdemeanor? No, I'm going to be charged with dozens of civil suits and everything else. That's why I have to be careful about the way I store my weapons because I'm a responsible adult. Uh, one handgun a month, again, it doesn't stop me from having all the handguns that I already have. It, it doesn't. It just is a pain in the ass to, if I want to buy multiple guns. Uh, report, reporting lost or stolen guns, dumb, doesn't, doesn't really matter because there's no requirement for me to know where all my guns are at any given point in time or, or to know when that item disappeared, so ineffective. And, uh, you know, background checks for all sales. I don't believe in background checks, period. I believe if somebody is an adult, then they should be able to purchase property just like anything else. So that's it. That's a breakdown of the laws that are signed into effect. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned something, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you liked it or didn't like it. Uh, if you didn't like it or if you did like it, leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to have a conversation with you and get other people's opinion on this. So thanks for watching. See you next time on 3Cog.